lot. Who's listened to the, the presenter? What was his name? Ty. Yeah, wasn't that awesome? Wasn't that awesome? So we need to relate, correct? So we're going to help you with closing by starting off and relating. So most of you probably have never hired a professional consultant before, right? So I'm going to guess we haven't. So let's imagine you have unlimited funds and you're going to build your dream home. I mean, it's a big project. So you hire a consultant. So the consultant's going to help you make sure that it's done in the right order, right? So you got to get the land cleared first, permitted, then you bring water, power, then you work on the foundation, you line up the different trades and all that. And they're there to guide you on every step of the way. So when they say to you, hey, here's what we need to do next, what do you do? Do it. Yeah, that's what you are as a consultant. When you're leading towards a close, they know you know more about this than they do. And when you start building in things and say, here's what we need to do next, here's what you ought to do next, here's what most people do, those phrases will increase your sales. AT&T did a study right after they got broke up and they were the monopoly. Uh, MCI came along. AT&T never had to sell before, did they? They were, you want a phone? Come to us? No other choice. So that's not selling. So uh, they went. They did a study and they hired a big firm and they found out people will do what they're told versus what they're asked by a factor of about 10. So if you tell somebody when you're presenting things like delivery, becoming a consultant, start baking in phrases like, here's what you need to do next. Here's what we should do next. Maybe we because you're partnering with them. But that's uh, really how we approach sales in this, by leading people to what we believe is a logical conclusion that's best for them. And uh, I'm going to turn this over to Debbie Abbott. Okay, so <clears throat> one of the things Moni taught me and has taught our organization is to create alignment. Um, I think we will all learned quite a bit today in the, in, from the um, storytelling. Um, and one of the things that Moni has always talked about alignment is make them sick, make them well. And it's very similar to what they explained in um, the storytelling. So we have a couple tools that help you create alignment. And we call them the introduction presentation. So if you were in our general session, there's actually three components to a tasting. It's the introduction, sharing the food refreshed, that is refreshed or heated, or cooked, and then closing the cell and teaching people how to actually get the food. Um, and that part, see people seem to kind of tiptoe around that part a little bit. But you don't have to if you build the case. And you build those case, you can build that case with one of these three tools. Now I absolutely love this Simple Clean Fly, fly, fly Flyer. What do you guys think of that flyer? Is that awesome? It's so awesome because it helps you build that case. It helps you tell that story. It helps you have that connection, be able to have those words, but also add your personal testimony. That is huge. You've got a huge tool with that. It's a built-in storyteller right there. So now you could also, if you're doing a really fast one-on-one, -on -one, you can use the Simple Clean Food uh, <coughs> video that everybody knows about that video, right? You guys, anybody not know about that video? Or anything? Okay, well, in the back office, your my office, if you type in Simple Clean Food video, it's a two minute video. Actually, all of these tools right here will be in your my office in the resource center. Um, the very last one, and it's the one we used to help um, build our business, and it's called the introduction flip chart. <coughs> now, this is the new experience for me to stand up here and use this microphone. If you would have seen, you know, back rewind seven years ago, I was shaking, I'm a little shaky right now, but I was really shaky in the corner, is that right? Yeah, I was really, really shaky in the corner um, because I didn't, I was used to being in front of a computer. Like, I didn't talk to people, I was, I was like a data person. Um, so I had to have my flip chart. When you have a brand new person that is shaky in the corner, have them consider downloading that flip chart. You can download it, the words are in the back. The neat thing about that flip chart, it's actually this presentation guide, but with words added to it. So you can download it, you can read it, 
it actually helps you even integrate your own personal testimony. So you're building that case and that story. But that's the flow of our tastings that have worked. Build a case by the introduction. Share our amazing, incredible food. And then don't forget to very um, easily and concisely tell how to get um, our product. So I think we're at sell the education. Should I touch on that or you want to just jump on that with the flyers? Okay, <laughs> that's mine, okay. <laughs> so, okay, that's no worries. Okay, so um, with these three main products, your customers are taking a, a tour of our product line. The Simple Clean Food um, is really embodied right here. You've got Simple Plate, was pre-portioned, pre-packaged for you. It's for in those days you don't know what you want um, or you haven't planned anything, you can just whip that out. Um, the chef packs, I love these chef packs. It's like taking the next step past the baby step where you're scooping out of the cans. And then our snacky line, which introduces a ton of fruits to you. So with these three products, you're taking a tour of our product line. And that is very, very important because people want to learn how to use our food. So the chef packs actually did. Do you want to touch on that? Uh, on the roll? Uh, okay. okay, so our chef packs, uh, because there is a learning curve to what our food is when people get in their homes. So the chef packs actually really do help people learn how to use that food and incorporate it into their everyday lives. So the new starter kits help build that chef pack, especially that very first chicken one. So that is um, a tour of the product line. So I mentioned you're sampling the food. I'm really, really excited to tell you how we move people from using, um, doing the chicken salad to the fajitas to the simple plate. And we're gonna touch on that towards the end. So the Simple Clean Food The Way, um, this is our flip chart for uh, the clothes because you want, you don't just want to run all the information at everybody at once. That's why we use an introduction piece, serve the food, continue to relate, and then use the flip chart, the clothes on, um, telling people how to get it. So Heather, you want to touch on the deliveries? All right, so I am a big, huge flip chart fan. Um, when Dave and I did our first tasting, actually quite a few tastings, um, but I remember our first one in particular, we called Monty and Debbie to tell them how we did after our tasting. And they were like, at that time it was called the queue and parties. Did you get any cues? And we were like, no. Did you get any, any parties? No. How about consultants? No. We had nothing, <laughs> with all due respect. <laughs> Great training from our life. We knew nothing about closing and how to do that. And so um, a lot of this has evolved. And, and these flip charts that we're talking about, Debbie told you they'll be available, but they'll be re-updated as well. We're going to be updating those. So anyway, um, so we didn't have any tools to help us. Now we have some amazing tools, and I'm a huge fan of the chef packs as well. Um, but did everybody get a pack of these or order these? You'll probably be able to get them in your back office. This is the What Should I Get First flyer. This is awesome. It limits them down to three very easy choices in what they're doing. So um, it goes over the different options that they have as far as, you know, just some different food lines that we have. But my favorite option is number one, and I share that with them, and I'll tell them this is our most popular option, or like you heard Monty said, here's what most people do. Um, option one is three simple plates, one chef pack, and seven snackies, and you're actually able to take a full tour of our food line through this. It's a very popular option. Um, so I kind of go through that, and then I will actually jump to option number three if there's somebody that has you know, severe food allergies. I'll say, well, option number three is a great option for that if you've got severe food allergies. So I just kind of go through those two, but get to know this flyer on the back of it. It has all the chef packs and what they're getting in it. Um, I don't make them make any decisions that night um, because a lot of them think that, oh, I don't know what I want, or they want to sit there and pick out what they want. I just tell them, 
you, it's just like the grocery store. You don't have to know everything before you go into it, it although it's good too because we come out with lots of extra stuff. But we're a grocery store, so until as long as you uh, choose what you're getting as uh, the night before it's scheduled to process, then you're going to be just fine. So um, utilizing this, and then the, again that flip chart walks you right through how to use it. And um, I'm one that I actually still use the flip chart because. Uh, people are watching us and wondering if they can do what we do, and I want them to know even though I don't need it anymore, I still feel like it's important for me personally to use. Um, but I would encourage you to use it until you have, not mastered, but you're very comfortable and you're having good proven results um, off of what your tasting is doing. So. <laughs> Right, exactly, yeah, yeah, because didn't he talk about people we learn in pictures just earlier? Uh, he said we learn in pictures and we do, and it's helpful um, to do that. So anyway, uh, so that is that part. I think I have another. No, so um, Christine is going to talk to you about perhaps one of the most important parts of the business. <laughs> I will argue um, that that is the most important part of this. Who in here wants to grow a large business? Who wants to make some money? Okay, everybody just raise their hands. How do we do that in this company? How do we do that? Tastings. Why do we do tastings? Exactly. Exactly. Can we grow a team and can we sell our awesome food without that? No. I am living proof that if you do not emphasize booking tastings from tastings, you are missing the boat. This is going to be way harder and it will hamper your momentum. We all need that to start, right? We all need to have that momentum go because then life's a little easier if you've got your tasting chain going because you're booking tastings from tastings. I completely failed at this pretty much the whole first year I was in this business. Despite the fact that I had great leadership, um, I, just, I was just not focused on that enough. So what I would like to uh, recommend is that you go into every tasting with extremely clear intent on booking tastings, okay? This, I honestly think this should be your most important thing that you walk out of there with. Plan on walking out of there with at least one tasting booked from that, okay? How many people have looked at their calendar and had nothing set? Yeah, me too, me too. That's hard. Getting that going is hard, isn't it? So let's just get it going. Let's climb that mountain. You're going to have to climb it. It's hard. You can do it. People do it. But then let's just keep it going, okay? So there's some tools we can have to make that happen. Um, first of all, you need to have a clear partner presentation. There's a slide in uh, the flip chart. I guess it's more of a page in the flip chart. And you are asking people to to book, you're gonna, there's a flyer. This one is the new Become a Fan. This explains the host benefits. You can reference that. I don't recommend going into a lot of detail about host benefits. You get free and half off food. It's awesome, it's fun. You know, it doesn't have to be a, you know, 25 people in your house. You, know, you can say little things like that, make it quick, but just really be excited to do that. Have your dates that you're available for the next four to six weeks clearly picked out. Go in there with them written down, okay? If you can give people choices, it is so much easier to book, okay? People just say, oh yeah, I'll get back to you on that. Sounds great, I would like to do that. I'll get back to you. How many times do they get back to us? The veteran consultants, right? It's tough, isn't it? That's tough. And then we have to follow up, which we always have to follow up, and if they do book, you're still gonna follow up because you're gonna coach them. But you really, really wanna have your own dates for them to choose from, clearly written with you. Put it on a, a calendar, have it as a prop, you know, use a sticky note. So other tools for booking, uh, a couple years ago, we, we were talking about these little photo holders, that one's called a Sputnik. Those are hosting cards. And you can have that displayed there, and then people, you know, you can point it out. You know, if you want to do this, you can, you know, pick one of these up, and lo and behold, you might, if you've introduced it, if you've had your hosting chat, in your presentation, you might walk back over there after you've been helping people fill orders and there might be a couple of them filled out. That rocks, that's pretty cool. And this can look, you know, different ways. That's just one example of a photo holder, I guess they're called, that one is a Sputnik. Um, but you can also have a gift. 
um, uh, Mandy Guiley, she used to stick bamboo skewers, she used to tape them to snackies and put the booking card at the end. And if you booked it there, committed to it, put your information down there, then you got to walk out with the snacky. It worked really well. So you know, be creative. You can make it very inexpensive. You can go to the dollar store and get some, some little thing. But you know, that's where you get to have some creative freedom. So um, I think that's about it. Definitely focus on it and don't do what I do. <laughs> did for the first year. Clear intent on booking. Thank you, Christine. You know, that does make a huge difference. And if you have those dates on that calendar, and if you have a Saturday, even make a comment like, yeah, you know what? Everybody wants Saturdays first. Who's going to go first? And so even be okay asking that question because you're providing a service. And once one person takes one, the next time, the next person wants it. So it's, a, it's okay to ask those questions, and it's okay to say, hey, this is what people do. Like Mike said, this is what people do. So they'll take that Saturday. They're going to they're gonna be racing for that date. So, okay, so Heather, you're going to talk more about the clothes here and your awesomeness here. There you go. They're going to be tripping over snackies to get to that Saturday. <laughs> All right, so the first thing, the next thing you want to talk about is the opportunity to join your team. And so you want to build a case for it. There's some um, little tips up there. One of the things, and most of this stuff is on this flyer right here. Most of these tips are on there. So uh, one is we get commission on our own order. So I'll actually go through that. I do not go into detail of the commission plan. You'll be there all night and they will be so overwhelmed. So I'll just say some of the perks are, you get commission on your own orders, you get customers' <laughs> orders and residual income. One of my favorite stories to tell is that we still get paid on tastings that we did six and seven years ago. So anybody here experience that? Yeah, we still get paid on work that we did six and seven years ago. And you guys will be able to say that same thing if you're not there yet. So um, it's easy to share because Everybody eats. So, and I will tell people, you just naturally do it. I have a lot of people that join my team that say, I don't really have a desire to, you know, build, or I'm not a salesperson. It naturally happens as they're at work eating their snackies. They naturally share. And I've had a lot come back to me and go, I have somebody that wants to order and I have no clue what to do. I mean, I know I can, but how do I do it? So, um, so very easy to do that. Uh, and then team sales and, of course, how many people here have enjoyed a little bit of free and half price products? We have been awesome, awesome. I mean, the fact that we get to be hosts as well is is amazing. We have such a generous host re uh, host rewards or fan perks program, I guess it's called now. So, um, so this flyer right here, get paid to share, is really, really good to walk them through. And I just, I actually usually stick to the back. That's the starter kits, and I'll show them the three different starter kits. I'll tell them you don't get paid any different on any one of these three that you choose. That's another nice thing. You don't have the more you invest in some companies, the more you get paid. We don't have that. So I will talk to them about our most popular one, the 265. This is our most popular one. Here's what most people do. Uh, they do that one. And I will also talk about the 499. Um, if that they want a uh, pantry organizer, you're getting it for a smoke and deal in that package. So I'll kind of go through that with them. And then next slide, I think. <laughs> All right, so you'll see those two quotes again. This is what most people do. Here's what you want to do next. So this little flyer is awesome. This is called, I knit it out here. This little half sheet one is called the best way to thrive flyer. And you can actually walk them through. The first thing you want to do is become a consultant. At the very least, you're going to earn a commission on your own orders. There's three different options that I just went over with that. Oh, by the way, I don't hand any of this stuff out either until the very end of uh, my tasting. So I don't give it to them at the beginning um, because they're distracted with it. So I hand it out at the very end. Um, and then you want to start your delivery service, with one of the, whichever one of those three options worked best for you. And then you want to have a tasting and earn some fan perks. So I will go through this quickly with them. And then I actually walk them through the order form. 
So the first thing I do is ask everybody in the room, no matter what they're doing, to fill out the top section of this. It's their name, email address, phone number, and I'll say at the very least, please fill this out for me. And then I will walk them through and say, right here is where you want to choose which of the three delivery options you want, and then right up here is where you, it was where you put your start date for that. So, um, and then choose if you want it every week, every two weeks, or every month. Then I'll say, for those of you that are on our delivery service, again, I highly encourage you to add on a starter kit, and here's where you'll choose one of those. So I'll tell them, pick one off of the delivery sheet, one off the um, consultant. What happened? Is that it? <laughs> uh, it messed me up. <laughs> okay. He's like, you're done. Click. <laughs> No, not the other half. Uh, anyway, then I'll tell them to just pick one of the starter kits out. So, And then at the bottom, I'll tell them to put their billing and shipping information right down there for me. So the reason why, no matter what they're doing, you want them to fill this top part out is because you want, as you're doing this, you're going to have people at tastings that don't order yet. And you want to be able to collect their information because you need to do follow-up. Everybody hear the quote, there's fortune in the follow-up. So. Um, so you want to be able to follow up with them. So at the very least, collect this from everybody. Um, but I will do everything I can to get everything done at the tasting itself. So it's uh, it just for me, it seems a lot more powerful. I do, oftentimes you can get more of the follow-up than you do at the actual tasting. That happens. Um, but I, if I can get it right then, I do. And then I think that's it for me. Is that the next slide is you, right? So... Uh, Christine alluded to it. So what is the most important skill to learn uh, in your Thrive Consultantship to building a large business? What's the most single important skill you need to develop? Duplicating, Duplicating by getting tastings, getting those tasting chains going. Because you can be terrible at closing uh, consultants, terrible at closing everything else, but if you have more tastings, you have a greater opportunity to improve those skills. When those tastings come to a stop, it all comes to a stop. So uh, we don't want to see that happen to you. But I'm going to show you the value of the how Christine talked about the, uh, the booking board, having dates to pick from. And we go even a step further. We, uh, we say these, we have the host or the fan or whoever we're working with have their booking board there with all their dates available within the next 30 days on a little sticky note there. You know, the, uh, they might not have all 30 days because they got Life happens, you know, they've got a dentist appointment on this day, they have it on that day. So they get their bookings there for them to pick from. Then we say, who could do a three to five uh, tasting? That means three to five people attending. <coughs> who could do a five to eight? Who could stretch and do an eight? And we, we pitch that. So I'm gonna call out somebody who doesn't know I'm gonna call out them, but she sees my eyes making eye contact with her. So uh, Debbie McKay, will you talk about the stand up and tell them the value? And then you're, you're a new consultant, you, you joined what month? May. You joined in May. We came and helped you and did your first launch and did that. And you followed the system with the tastings. And your first, now you guys, I hope you're paying attention to what I'm saying. Her first event she did, how many tastings you booked that night? Just one. What's that? Just one. You, I thought we did five at that one. We did five or six. Or it's the second round we did that with. Okay. So you followed the system on the second one. You booked, you filled your calendar. So the system works and we are working this with others, we've got some other new folks that just booked five or six tastings, by making it a deliberate effort by saying, these are my dates available, uh, and I, I would like to get three to five, five day, uh, eight plus tastings, and it's really worked well. Yes? One thing I just wanted to quickly mention, um, I used to get six to eight tastings a week, or a month as well, and one of the things that I did is, I took a calendar and I read across all the spots that were blocked off, and green, Square around everybody that's open, and then I gave them the pen and let them put their own name and phone number on there because there's a psychological connection to like an agreement or a contract when they put their own info on your page. So you're so right. That that, that deliberate action locks them in a lot more. More likely to commit. Yeah, like absolutely. Moni, can you tell them a little bit more about the three to five, five to eight, and eight plus? You're the author of it. <laughs> you do it. Okay, I had walked right into that one, didn't I? <laughs> okay, so 
You know what, we do think, and we found that what works really well is for people to stretch. There's, uh, you've heard of the fear of loss versus the hope of gain. Well, when you have, and you say, you know, we can do a three to five tasting experience with chicken salad, um, but if you want fajitas, we can actually cook. You want to do at least five to eight people. And then, you know what, if you want a tasting experience of um, eight or more people, we will do a simple plate. So as a business owner, it actually makes a lot of sense to do that, to, to store those particular products. And then also people want a reach for the next thing, you know? So, um, you, and you can add those up. So if you're saying, hey, I want a Saturday, people would typically do Saturdays, then get more specific, okay? If you want a Saturday, what type of experience do you want on that Saturday? Do you want a five to eight, you know, three to five, five to eight, or eight plus? And you know what, people will say, sometimes that when you're booking those tastings, they'll say, well, you know, I don't, I only know a couple people. And oftentimes people will say, um, want to join with other people and combine their tasting so they can, and it, it, it's been fun. We see that happen a lot where they'll say, you know what, I can get, I, I can get three to five, but I can get three to five. Oh, let's have an eight plus experience and really live it up. So it's kind of fun. There's a known sales adage. People are attracted to uh, fear of loss versus hope of gain. So if they're going to miss out on something, they'll jump on it. If you say, hey, you'll get this thing, they'll miss it later. So what do you do if someone has booked an A-plus tasting and you get there and they have Well, that's part of host coaching. So you should have had a lot of contact. You should uh, have a lot of confirmation of that. But that's until you get there. They're talking about a lot of people I'm going to answer that. You can, you can rebut my answer, but I'm going to answer it. The more defined your host coaching is, what is it? Oh, how many do you have? What's their names? Uh, you can even call, you can say, can I call them? I've done not, not to verify, but to encourage them and send them things. So. We should repeat the question. Oh, the question was, what do you do when you, they say you're going to have eight people and they only end up with three, two or three? I have to tell you, two or three people at a tasting is some of my favorite tastings. I don't care, I'm getting in their home. So I'm not going to say, oh, I'm taking the simple plate away from you. You know, I typically won't do that. So, um, yeah, yeah. So um, most of my tastings go 5 to 8. That's kind of the most popular. And the, if I have the fajitas, I'm going to do the fajitas there anyways if I have three people. Because I, that's the big goal is... I love tastings. Three to five people is actually my very perfect. I love that. Um, but five to eight tend to be the most. So, and it does, you, they are going to drop off. People, things happen. So, it does happen. Yeah. It does happen. yeah. The, more, the more involved you are prior to the event, and the more you ask and the more deliberate it is, the more you're partnering with that person. Because unless they're nudged, they're, do, they're doing their daily kid things, everything else. So, you've got to be that nudge. I want to talk about the flip chart. And these ladies are going to comment on this. Our flip chart is how we all three build our business. What's really valuable about the flip chart, it's the order of the flow. We, be, we believe we build the case to a logical conclusion, and the end one is the consultantship. We go through the other pieces first, and I think that's the strongest value of the flip chart. It keeps you from going down rabbit holes. It also gives you, makes, it makes you in the two pieces. The first half is called the introduction, which is personal testimony, but you taste some of the food. We call the second half the way. The reason we call it the way, it's the way for them and it's the way for you to get them to go participate in your program, such as tastings, deliveries, becoming a consultant. But uh, you're, you mentioned about the flip chart, and you mentioned the flip chart. Do you use the flip chart or do you just follow the flow? I know a lot about it. Um, I definitely used it for probably the first year. And then now we have this awesome new one. So I went away from doing it because I was now really comfortable with that. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because I am famous for getting really excited, talking way too much, and getting down rabbit holes. So that flip chart absolutely keeps me on track. And I think in the end, people are pretty appreciative about that. So um, I'm definitely really excited about what Ty was talking about this morning and, and adding um, sort of a better... Uh, relatable engagement at the beginning during the introduction. I, that really got my brain going, so I'm really excited about that too. That's important. I love the flip chart. <laughs> no flip chart. No, it does. 
I need to know how and what order yeah. people say. My brain does not work like his brain. He can stand up here and just spit stuff out. I have to have a systematic way of putting it through my mind. And the flip chart absolutely does that for me. And it's, and like Christine said, I, I had, when I wasn't doing flip charts and I got away from them, and I had like two hour tastings. I mean, and I had to show every, and that was when we had emergency products, so you had to show everything, you know. And now my tastings are somewhere between 30 and 45 minutes, maybe an hour. And I've covered everything, and I've given them a system on how, and I've helped, make, helped them to make the best decision for their family because I've given them simple options for them. The flip chart does all of that. What it also does is for people who do struggle with speaking in front of groups, um, it takes some of that fear away, especially if there just happens to be somebody in the audience that you're um, not reading and they're making you nervous. You ever have that person sitting out there that's kind of like, <laughs> or the, the husband that got dragged to it and at first they're like, <laughs> yeah. So. It helps you um, stay connected to your presentation and not get distracted by that because you now in your mind know, well, I'm not going to let it bother me. I know exactly what I'm about to say. Um, those new flip charts you all did are just a be beautiful thing and I'm definitely using them again because it just streamlines it and it keeps me on track because we all can, you know, squirrel and we have a point to this and we want to stick to, to what we're doing and it works beautifully for that, especially calming nerves. I wanted to say that particular flip chart, if you, have any of you seen the business overview that the Million Dreams put out? It's a, okay, that Million Dreams business overview, Monty wrote that and we broke that up. That's what the flip chart is. So the business overview, breaking that introduction, tasting the food and doing the clothes, really is from um, Monty's business overview and then that piece. So it's it's awesome. It's an awesome um, it's an awesome story. That's what I want to say. Has anybody here used our flip charts? Anybody pull? Okay. Anybody have any testimonial in favor of them? You want to talk about how it's helped you? We used it right after you released it to us as a, as a beta test. Well, this this class is about closing. How did it help you with closings? Um, I was my turn to talk during okay. the presentation. My husband does the first part of the presentation while I'm looking. My turn is the, the delivery, the posting, and the consultant. We walked out of there with a booking and a consultant. And I was standing there reading. I'm holding the foot chart in front of me, and I'm reading the board right on the back of the sheet. My knees are shaking, my hands are shaking, I'm sweating. I've been talking to these people for an hour. <laughs> is, is it a good security blanket for you then? It was, okay. and it will be. Yeah. Did somebody else have your hands up? They use it and appreciate it? Tell us. Yeah, it gives you a, it's almost like taking a checklist. It's just, it's really, it's really what flip chart is, is a checklist. And make sure you hit, I mean, we all did this in the beginning, we did our tastings. Uh, did, you get any t uh, uh, did you get any consults? I forgot to ask. You know, it, you know it's, uh, it makes you ask. So uh, it is a great tool for that. I've used it a couple times, but my problem was for people that ask questions, uh, did you off track because it would be something that I was like, you know, I keep saying, I'll get to that, I'll get to that, and then I set it down, so I need help and guidance that way. Do, do more of them, and they'll come to you. So, yeah. anybody else have any comments on the flip chart? Yeah. Yeah, Jeff Warney kind of told mine, but it was pretty much there at the end. I had a consult, or a potential consult. Speak louder, Amber. Going, I can't do this, and I'm like, the words are on the back. All you got to do is read because that's all I did. And she says, oh, okay, let's do this. And she signed up as a consultant. So if you didn't hear that, she, what she said is, at the end of her presentation, said, I can't stand through and do what you do. And she turned around and said, I just read these words right here. And they, they joined. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call somebody out, too. Uh, Valerie. <laughs> we did... Uh, we did yours with you, and you were talking to me out there that you, it was what, how many minutes before your thing did you actually study the flip chart? 
about 15. I, um, I was very, very busy. Uh, this just got real. <laughs> I, um, I signed up and I was really energetic and my life kind of fell apart. And it was starting to fall apart at my first um, tasting, uh, my intro. And so they were coming and I hadn't had a chance to even look at anything, barely taken anything out of the box. So real quick, I pulled it all out and I started looking at the flip chart. And I only had about 15 minutes and I kind of just faked my way through. And it was pretty good. I got... I got uh, seven tastings from it, oh, and, but, but no, no consultants because I really didn't understand that part yet. <laughs> so yeah. Oh yeah. Until last night, I got my first consultant final. So what you heard is a testimonial by somebody using a deliberate and thoughtful process that hits on all the points and they got results of that. We are hearing that all over. So we're not here to sell our flip chart, we're here to sell a process. If you have a proven process, in fact, we are so, all three of us are so process driven in our tastings, we serve the same thing over and over and over and over at tastings. Because I'm not gonna experiment in food in front of a new person. I have it that so dialed in that now I'm working on my dialogue. I'm working on what I say. I'm more comfortable how I approach. I'm circling the room and making friends. If I'm making a brand new recipe for the first time, I'm going, man, I hope this turns out. You know, so we don't do that. We simply don't do that. Oh, I was just gonna say, we, we all built uh, good-sized businesses off of corn, pineapple, and chicken salad. I mean, that's, and maybe a macaroon here and there. Yeah, I mean, it's, that's really what we built it off of, and it's still a home run. And so the, it is, it is. Yeah, you just keep repeating it. And, and the more you do tastings, that you can't not get better. So that's why you got it. When Christine was talking about keeping them consistent and be intentional about that, you, every time you do them, you're going to get better. You can't, I, I always think I can't get any worse than coming out with zero and being so scared to do anything. You know, I can't get any worse than that. I can only get better. And it took us a long time. Like, our next one, we weren't amazing at. What is, Sherry says, I... Oh, Oh, mediocre, oh, I was going to say crappy. That seems to be the word of, <laughs> yeah, mediocre parties. That, that's what her business is made of. And it's so true. You just get better and better and better the more you do it. And you never are perfect. We still have tastings where we don't get stuff. It happens. So you have to keep moving on. You know, it just hit me as I'm sitting here listening to her talk about that, that, what Ty just got through saying. We're doing the flip chart. We're saying the same message in every household over and over. Remember he said, does this sound canned, what I'm doing? And we said no. That's how we are with the flip chart. Maybe the first one's weird and awkward. But we've got that flip chart and the dialogue so dialed in, it's from our heart now. And it just comes across and we become very proficient tasting uh, uh, hostings. It's, you know, really, does that make sense to you? Doing something over and over and over, you get better and better at it? I think we have eight minutes now for Q&A. So if anyone has any other questions, um, we can cover those. Okay, let's, let's get on one thing. So this is about closing. The reason, or, or what we're saying is adopt the phrase, here's what we need to do next, but have a deliberate flow and the closings are all very natural in there. So that's how we close, by having a deliberate process and at each point asking people to do things and say, here's what we all need to do next. Here's your pass out order forms. Get your pens out. Uh, Debbie doesn't quite like what I said, some of them. But... Yeah, he says... Now this is the time where we all order. <laughs> One of the things we get asked, and again, this is probably for us personally, we get asked, well, what about catalogs? Do you hand out catalogs? We don't use catalogs. We use those flyers that you see. That's what we use. And you can be very successful with them. Well, you guys address this. Uh, the only... Cues, they don't, they don't call them cues. The only uh, deliveries we get that are under $100 are for consultants just signing up. All of our orders are $100 plus. Because of using that flyer, here's the three things you ought to do, and not one of them is less than 100 bucks. Giving them that $20 off, too, on, their, on the option one. Mm -hmm. Did you want to add anything here? I just think that because that options flyer gives people such good direction, it takes all that overwhelm, oh, I just don't even know where to start. You don't want confused 
customers because a confused customer generally says no, right? So it is your best friend and it's just a natural expectation that it's going to be at least 100 bucks because you didn't get to pretty chippy. And everything in those, in those options, one, two, three, are lead, leads them to start using the product. Yes. They're all recipe-driven. Yes. Okay. Real quick question. In the beginning, we didn't use the flip card. 